then uh, you may call your next witness, and uh, I would remind The seat will call Peter O'Connell. Peter O'Connell. Okay. May inquire. Please state your name and spell your last for the record. Peter O'Connell. O apostrophe C O N N E L L. And what street do you live on? Sandstone Court. Is that in Boise Ada County, State of Idaho? Yes. And about how long have you lived there? Um, shy of 14 years. Are you familiar familiar with Miss Lachiando? Oh yeah. And about how far is her house from yours? right across the street. I'm going to take you back to December 8th, 2020. At that time, were there people, or who was living in your house? Uh, me, my wife, two kids, two dogs then. How old were your kids at the time? Uh, at the time, they're six and nine. Okay. What does your wife do for work? She's a overnight Emergency physician. Can you tell me about your neighborhood? Oh, our neighborhood is great. We definitely lucked out on life timing to live there. Um, it's great. It's quiet. Everyone knows each other. It's safe. It's secure. We have natural spaces. We have access to the foothills close to downtown. It's great. A lot of great people who've worked really hard to make it there and live there. And everyone, like I said, knows each other, looks out for each other. And there's families with children? Yeah, wow, that's one of the draws of the street. Right. Lots of kids playing outside. Uh, let me take you back to that December date, approximately uh, 5 p.m. Were you home that day? I was, yeah. Do you recall where you were at in your house? I do. Where were you? I was in the kitchen, where I am a lot, cooking dinner. Was your wife home? She was. Do you recall what she was doing? She was, I do. She was sleeping, attempting to sleep in preparation for her nighttime shift. Were your children home? Yep. And what were they doing? Hanging out, probably playing Legos is a safe bet. Um, and uh, yeah, kids are home, dogs are home. Did anything out of the ordinary happen? Sure. Um, yeah, all of a sudden, lots of loud noises um, coming from the front of the house, from the street. It was in the back of the house, kitchen's in the back of the house, kind of backed up to the foothills. So. Went to the front door to see what was going on and see what all the noises were. Um, noises were uh, car alarm. Car alarm was one I heard. Um, like the first, like, what is, like, it's kind of like a lot of loud noise, like, what is this? What's going on? So I went to the front of the house to try and sort out what was going on. And I could hear car alarms and could see three individuals making tons of obnoxious noise. Um, um, out in front of Diana's house. How did your dogs react to the noise? Well, they didn't like it. I mean, they're freaking out, barking. How'd your kids react? Um, my kids were scared. I, I tried to shield them from it, um, but my kids were scared. There's, you know, a gentleman with a gun on his hip in front of our house, um, being erratic, aggressive, angry, loud, obnoxious towards my neighbor slash, uh, you know, parent of my kids, friends, friends, etc. You know, we lived across the street for 10 years or so. You get to know someone. So my kids were, my kids reacted in such a way, like they were scared and confused. So I brought them to the back of the house. I didn't want them up in the front of the house, you know, definitely didn't want them going outside. Didn't want them really paying any attention to what was going on because as kids, they had enough going on to try and make sense of that. So, and that's kind of what I did. I mean, I, I had to make dinner. I, I observed enough to know what was going on, but I wasn't about to go outside and politely ask them to stop because my wife was sleeping. I mean, there are guns involved. I stayed away. I got to the back of the house. 
and made dinner. So, uh, for clarification, you said you heard a car alarm and there were three individuals? Yeah. And they were in front of uh, Miss Lachigando's home? Yep. Making lots more noise than the car alarm, in addition to the car alarm. Did you recognize any of the other noises? Um, like a, what are they, like a bullhorn louds, like a bullhorn siren, you know, sirens, um, banging on buckets, inaudible to me at the time, inaudible, just loud noises. You know what it sounded like? It was definitely intimidating. It sounded like this, the scene from a movie when they have the guy in, a, in like a cell and they blast all sorts of loud noises to try and, try and terrorize someone, try and intimidate, scare, and uh, make miserable like a prisoner is what it reminded me of. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. You may cross-examine the witness. So, um, you said it was about 5 o'clock? Yeah. Um, and your wife and her works nights, correct? That's exact. That's correct, yeah. So she was sleeping at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, right? Yeah. That's not typical, correct? Do you work nights? No. It is typical. It's typical for people who be sleeping at five, or just people who work nights. People who work nights. I mean, okay. I, I'll that's, sleep at five if I'm right. tired. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get that. Take a nap sometimes, but sure. Um, I'm just, yeah. Um, <coughs> okay. Um, did did these individuals ever approach your house? No. Did they ever? Did it seem like they were ever? Uh, Okay, let me let me strike that. Let me start over again. Um, did it seem like the event was addressing anybody else in the neighborhood? It was addressing everybody in the neighborhood. So they they went around the neighborhood. No, it was loudest. I mean, it was, it was impossible to ignore. Okay, but were the people facing Luciano's house or other people's houses? They're both. They're, Objection there's, asked and answered. Yeah. And. Did you wish to respond to the objection? I don't know how exactly. Um, basically, I'm asking him if. And your honor, if we may approach. Okay. And I'll allow uh, you to rephrase. Okay. Um, Hang on a second. Let's get the white noise off. Okay. There we go. Um, Did they go in front of anybody else's house but that house? I saw them in front of Diana's right? house, which is essentially in front of my house. So did you, you didn't you didn't see them go to any other house, right? Um, not from not from my vantage point. No, they're in front okay. of Diana's house. But yeah. but here's the thing: it's in front of my house. It's like right there. It's like right in front of my house. So okay. you might you might have been going for Diana's house, but the nature of where it's at. That's the question it, it was, I asked her. Could you please just answer the questions I ask, not go off on the other things? Well, I'll do my best. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you said you were in the middle of making dinner? Yes. Um, did you finish making dinner that night? Yeah. It's a priority um, of mine. Okay, so um, you said... interrupted. That... Finished it later. Okay. But, you... but yeah, I finished making dinner. Okay. Kids um, got to eat. And you, you described the sound as like something they would do in torture chambers or something, right? So you know there's like a classic scene from a movie, someone's in like a solitary confinement cell and they blast sound in to try and attack? <clears throat> Sirens, loud noises. So in your incident, how long does that noise last when they're torturing? In the movie? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's a movie. I mean, they clip to another scene. I'll give you an example of what the sound was. It lasted that night for maybe 15 minutes. Okay. So in the movies, it's, it's more extreme. I'm not going to. I'm sorry. Repeat the question. What do you want to know about the movies? Um, well, the, in the you, you described it as a torture. Objection yeah. relevance. Do you wish to respond to how um, this is relevant? He has described the con the conduct as torturous, without fully the loud noise goes on for days. You know, like the FBI uses that to to wear people down. Okay, um, this so is I, short, I lot short. And movie. so here's the uh, ruling. The ruling okay. is I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay. And rather than us um, go off on too many 
side notes about the length of time of torture in movies. Um, you can ask the witness what his experience was, uh, right. because that would be his personal knowledge. And right. so if you want to elicit his personal knowledge about his experience, you're welcome to. Okay. Have you ever been tortured? Objection yeah, relevance. <laughs> okay. I'm mm-hmm. going to sustain that. Go ahead. And, Your Honor, at this point, if we could excuse the jury. Okay. And so I'll go ahead and ask the jury to go have a break. And then we'll... All right, please. Address the issues. How about we have the witness step out as well? We'll have you back. Just uh, wait in the hall if you would, sir. Do I go back now? Just go ahead and hang out. Or you can, yeah, why don't you do that? Why don't you have a seat? It might take a minute. Okay, I think everyone's out. And so, Mr. Corte Batarte. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, and I appreciate the court's uh, patience. I think at this point, we've had multiple objections that have been sustained. Uh, the relevance in regards to whether movies um, obviously do not pertain to this incident. Um, it's the state's fear at this point, um, potentially, that we could have a mistrial. Obviously, that is not something that the state wants. Um, so that is the reason for my request to have the jury exit and then um, maybe simply request from uh, your honor an admonishment of the defendant um, at this point. And what are the parameters of the admonishment that you're seeking? <clears throat> Your Honor, just to uh, stick towards the relevance of that day, uh, I think we've gotten past any probative value that has been um, allotted to whether movie torture or whether this is simply. Um, I guess that that's a lot of words, but really what I'm asking, Your Honor, is an admonishment to keep it to the, the witness's own perceptions, uh, the feelings that he had that day. Um, and then to hopefully move along this cross without potentially getting into a, a mistrial. Thank you. Do you wish to respond? Yeah, Your Honor, um, third witness testified that it was like the movies. I wasn't addressing coming up with anything new. I was just crossing exactly what he had described it as is in the movies. So I was trying to clarify that point as far as my conduct didn't meet that um, same thing. And... I would agree at this point, you made your ruling on it. Um, my next thing was no more questions. So okay. I'm done with the witness. Okay. And just uh, for future witnesses, because... Well, maybe one more question. Sorry. Now you're finding me. me. <laughs> um, so let's keep in mind that when you have a lay witness, a person who's not an expert, that you can elicit from them their personal experience. Okay, um, about the event in question. So we have uh, this event in question, which was colorfully described, and that uh, isn't an open door to. Um, we can move on from to, it. To going off. So I'm sure that we'll have many other witnesses, and if we can just keep the focus on that person's perceptions and knowledge and also uh, keep it focused on disturbing the peace and the elements of that charge, whether they happened or not. That's really what the jury needs to know about. But I just so you understand I wasn't trying to go off. It's just he had discussed it. I thought that opened it up for cross. So okay. if not, I think we settled. It's not. The okay. state can talk about it. I can't. I get it. So that, okay. as far as that issue is concerned, but, yeah, there's a couple more questions I forgot that I needed to ask him. Okay. And uh, just to be clear, Mr. Jones, um, it's in your interest as well to keep it focused on the facts that matter. I'm trying. Um, and uh, because you're the one that needs to convince the jury as well to some degree um, of you know, that the state hasn't proven things beyond a reasonable doubt. They have that burden, right? I'm not saying that it's your burden. Um, but it's in your interest uh, to, to make good of the time that you have with the witness um, is what I'm trying. trying to say. So I think you understand that. Yeah. Okay. And so let's go ahead then and have our jury come back in. And would your honor allow me to uh, re-admonish the, the witness about, thank you. And 
maybe uh, less color would be nice. <laughs> so. I'll remind you, sir, that you are under oath and you've already uh, been Please be seated. Thank you. And you may uh, continue your cross examination. Um, so, how you you didn't you weren't aware of the people that were outside until you heard the noise. You rephrase that. Um, when did you become aware of the people outside? Uh, yeah, the noise. Okay, and. Um, where you said that you were afraid to go out there and talk to them? That's that's correct. That's true. Did you call 911? No. Nope. Um, you said that there are several kids in the neighborhood, right? There's lots of kids in the neighborhood. Yeah. Did you call your neighbors and warn them? I, I, everyone knew what was going on. I, I didn't have to. Okay. Thank you. That'll be all. Okay. Thank you. Um, and any redirect? Uh, just one brief question. Do you recall how long the noise lasted? I guess, I, I mean, I recall about 15 minutes. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay. And any recross? Nothing. Okay. May the witness be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. All right. You may thank be you. Excused. For the day? Yes. Okay. Thank you.